Hyatt's memory is Nan playing a visual novel called In the Shade of Lilies, which is basically exploring whether there's a difference between realism and fantasy. So we're going to begin. bushes as the quiet lilies shout. I would I would be planted. I would I would to grow or even wait to rot and never ever know. I would I would be with you. I am and always will. Though sleepy day or wakeful night, here on my lily hill. That was supposed to be dark. It was very upbeat. A woman in a lovely blue dress announces as she leans down, arms outstretched. That was a little girl. I didn't know what she was holding. Here, my baby Simba. mentioned by Simone. There's no birds. Birds? There aren't any birds. Simone lied. What's this? When she looks back down at her hands, she realizes that Simone has disappeared. Get over there. Oh. What is this? Is it a pot? Wait. What? What? Did the cat break? You haven't been watered, said Silva with a gasp, quickly running over to get the watering can. Sylvia begins singing an old gardening song with a distant, breathless voice. There are thirsty flowers Dying for love. 
a sprinkle of water begins to sound on the dry soil. There are thirsty flowers drowning in mud. Okay. The stream goes louder and pitters and spits. There are thirsty flowers who need a cool drink. The gurgle of water plunging into water nearly overpowers the half-hearted tune. There are thirsty flowers. There is silence. Smell. So, so some of them wasn't real? I mean, the cat did talk. There were lily petals everywhere, stems, flowers. Had the garden not been behind her just a moment ago? Simone? Her question was asked in a vain hope that some sort of explanation will materialize. Yet none came for a long moment. Should I call for Simone or search for Simone? I want to search for Simone. Sylvia begins desperately searching the garden for a clue as to where Simone might have gone. From under the flowers, a collar seems to glimmer. Her collar! Oh, she looks tired. Reaching out to touch it, but as her fingers touched the tag, the world rushed out from under her and suddenly everything changed. The table, the ground, everything was different for a brief moment. What? With that, she started and released the collar, allowing it to fall back to the table and disappear in the pile of mango lilies. Oh, smoke? A cry emerging from behind Sylvia, and as she turned around, she found herself in the field of lilies. The art kind of gives off a feeling of hopelessness. <laughs> What is this place? Whisper Sylvia. Okay, Casimir is calling. The quiet sound seems to radiate from the ground all around her. Nope. Her feet begin to sink into the muddy earth, almost being pulled in. Sounds like something else. Ah! Sylvia exclaims as she bends over to pull her feet free from the sinking mud. Oh what? There's that quicksand. No. To her shock, there was a glimmering from the mud. Toys, feathers, collars, so much of it. All of it was Simone's. What? Simone? I'm sorry. Come back. Please. The frantic words came out in wet tear filled sobs as she tried to push the mud away. Simone. Oh, so Simone collapsed in the mud. She sank deeper. Now, waist deep in the mud, surrounded by the haunts of the mud tombs and the suffocation they carried with them. Why? Did you have to eat them. 
Is the oh the birds? Why did you have to die? Smells sink into the mud. And with those words, Sylvia burst into deep tears. A series of heartbreaking thoughts ran through Sylvia's mind as she sank deeper and deeper into the mud. What was the point of it all? Simone was her partner, her support, her friend. Without a real reason to go on, nothing would be worth it. Maybe I should just give up. And go with Simone, forever. Surrender. Take a deep breath. Um, we're gonna surrender. I mean, take a deep breath. I don't wanna surrender to... What am I doing? No. This isn't right. My god. I need to get out of this place before I sink into the mud. Okay. Sylvia digs her nails into the mud and drags herself with effort until she completely comes out of the mud. Can mud be that dangerous? Like Simone. I give anything to see you one more time. Just one more time. Sylvia slowly closes her eyes. All of that was fake, right? Me talking to Simone? Was everything just a dream? I wish you weren't. <coughs> Simone, you're alive? Suddenly, she hears a sound that seems strangely familiar. Quickly, she opens her eyes to find out a beautiful surprise. Someone's back. Or is it really back? Simone? No, you can't be here. You cannot. Sylvia, I'm glad you're fine. <laughs> the cat talks. I remember the cat talks. Simone, I. I felt so sad that you're about to surrender because of me. had a very happy life by your side. We share beautiful moments with each other. No matter what happens, I will always be by your side. And the moments we live will always be there. So please, don't continue suffering because I'm not by your side anymore. Would you do it for me? You're right. And I promise I will go on for you. Celia? Celia tried to bring her hand closer to Simone. But as soon as her fingers brushed against its fur, she slowly disintegrated, forming a cloud of particles in the air 
that gradually vanished with the gusts of wind. I love you so much, Simone. I love you. Is that the end? Okay. And that's the end of In the Shade of Lilies. Uh, I'm confused. Was the lady, was Sylvia stuck in the past of something? Or could she not move on from the past? Or was this all in her head? I know this is supposed to be different. Like, it's like realism or like fantasy different. I don't think they really differentiate from each other. I mean, people can do that. I met some people like that. But I'm kind of confused. I feel like this story, there's a, it's a metaphor for something, but I'm not exactly sure. I'm not that. I don't know how to figure stuff out like that. Though I like the storyline and the whole premise of it. It's really good. Okay, and that was it. That was it. Alright. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Bye!